everyone. Welcome back to Shonky Lab. I'm Elton, and I have two guest producers today. Uh, one in the shape of Pete Hammond. Hello. This is Pete. And the other in the shape of Ollie Peters. I'm slightly disappointed you didn't play the intro music. Oh, no, no, that's uh, that's all in edit. Oh, <laughs> oh bless you, Ollie. Hello. Yeah, let's pull back the curtain a little bit more for everyone else, yeah? Not like my show. <laughs> <laughs> Not many things that, are. You used to listen to that whole two minutes of that intro. <laughs> yeah, sod that. And everyone be quiet, don't breathe. Yeah, and that's that's not gonna happen. That that doesn't happen. If if I had oh no, I need more wires to do that. Sorry. Head now, it's fine. Yeah. Alright, cool. Um right, well, um I I've been joined by these two lovely men uh to talk about gigs and going to gigs and music festivals, I suppose. I I'm guessing you guys have uh entertain the thought of going to at least one musical festival uh, one or two yes yeah <laughs> cool well we're going to get into that in a minute uh first off i need to do a bit of housekeeping and tidying up around here now i need to give a swear warning now believe it or not <laughs> is this I, what I, you were talking the other day sorry is this what you were talking about the other day on on the black dog yes yeah okay I just feel like I need to cover bases because people can't seem to grasp the fact that this is an explicit contented uh, podcast. Do you know what? I'm deliberately not going to swear all night now. That's that's fine. You you can do that. That's fine. Um, I, I can't. I try, but I can't. <laughs> I I'd say I'd can't. give it a try. <laughs> I'd, a I'd say I'd give it. I'd give it a try, but I can't see it fucking happening. <laughs> <laughs> now, well. What's happened um, is I do a podcast called the Grand Prix Podcast with Andy Plasterdies, and uh, we had a little while ago, towards the end of the season uh, last year, uh, someone make a comment, a gentleman make a comment on one of our episodes saying uh, something along the lines of, I'm enjoying it, but do you really have to swear so much? I don't see the point in it. Oh, God. And I'm like, well, okay. Um, one, it's free content. Two, it says explicit. Three, it's my sandbox. Four, <laughs> I just want to talk to my mate. So I apologized, <laughs> even though I even though I, I apologized to the fucking Loom Keeney guy as well, didn't I? For you, Ollie. Yeah, that's right. For you. <laughs> I... <laughs> yeah. It wasn't even my fault. No, I'm sure it wasn't. No, no, it wasn't on your podcast, was it? Oh, it was my podcast. I listened to it. It was Jim's fault. Yeah, but it's, it's your Jim's podcast. Fault. Your fault. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah. So he, I, where I, is he now? What? Sorry. Where is he now? What? Who? Jim? <laughs> no, Mister Lunkini. Oh God. Um, I don't know. I might put him in the tags for this. So just see if he'll he'll hit it. Just see if he listens to the whole of it. Just yeah. to see if he's mentioned. Yeah, if he'll Google himself again, idiot. Um, anyway, yeah, this this guy, I apologised to him and said, okay, right, we'll try and tone it down a little bit, but there's no promises. But if he's listening to a Grand Prix podcast, what makes you think he's going to be listening to this one? He won't be. He won't be, but I'm just, just in case there's another <laughs> crazy person who yeah. doesn't see the explicit tag and downloads it and has their kids around and think oh do you know what shonky lab that's that's a lovely jolly name isn't it let's put it on for the kids and there's us effing and jeffing all the way through it um i don't want that so if you're if you're easily offended if you don't like swears or you don't like idiots talking to each other then i suggest you turn this off now so there we go there's there's a swear warning if, <laughs> if you're still listening it's your fault bloody hell <clears throat> yeah uh, I I feel like I have to do that, though. So there we go. There's your warning. Um, other warning as well. Mixler. Normally, we record this live on Mixler. Uh, Mixler.com forward slash Rogue 2 Media. Uh, but at the moment, I can't. I've got a computer that I used to use to stream it out to Mixler, which is just easier to do it that way. But it's an old XP computer, and it was solely designed just to do that job. 
Unfortunately, Mixler have moved away from XP and can't support that anymore. So I'm screwed. So I am on the lookout for a tablet or something. Something nice and cheap. So if anyone sees a nice tablet or a uh, even a netbook, maybe. One of them old netbooks, that'll do me. Uh, so if, if you cop an eyeful of something like that, let me know. And then I can go purchase it and then we can get back on Mixler. Huh, right, I feel... That is all in order now. I feel like I've, I've done some work for for once. I feel um, a Patreon coming along. Sorry? I feel a Patreon coming along. Oh, there, oh yeah, there is a Patreon. Uh, thank you to everyone who's uh, donated to that. It is actually working. So <laughs> thank you. It's helping everything survive at the moment. So a uh, big thumbs up to absolutely everyone who's doing that. And uh, if anyone fancies doing that, then pop along to Patreon and look up Rogue 2 Media and it, all the details are in the show notes anyway. I put them in there every single week. So week, I don't even release every week anyway, do I? But every episode, it's always in there. So you can pop along there or to shonkylab.com and you find all the details there as well. Thank you very much, Ollie, for reminding me of that. Hello. That's fine. Ah, there we go. Right. Um, I've got some news before we get into our subject. Would you like to hear some news? Oh, yes, yes, please. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, uh, Ollie, this is a bit of a, a, a flashback to you, isn't it? Doing your your episodes, but yeah, there we go. Yeah, could we not? Oh, okay. Well, I'm I'm still going to do it. I've looked for this, I found this, and I think you'll like it. Uh, is this Britain's rudest address? Oh, uh, the scene. This is awesome. <laughs> a house, <laughs> a house which has been described as as the rudest address in Britain has been put up for sale. Uh, Potential buyers may need a decent sense of humour if they are to move into a three-bedroom property at 69 Cock Lane. (laughs) Uh, The semi... (laughs) I'm 12. It's brilliant. (laughs) The semi has gone on from the market at uh, £449,000, quid. So there we go. (laughs) <laughs> you can buy a semi at 69 Cock Lane. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> we are all 12, aren't we? We're going to be smoking <laughs> behind the bike sheds very soon. <laughs> like going into the bank and trying to get like a mortgage for them. <laughs> 69 Cock Lane. I'm scared. Sorry, what? I, look, look, I've brought proof. And what's your name? Mickey Mouse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh dear, love it. Um okay, <laughs> next bit of news I have uh I think you guys have seen this as well. It possibly I might have nicked it off of Ollie's page, uh, but I I don't care. <laughs> um man dies after massive porn <laughs> magazine collection <laughs> falls on him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love this one. A man apparently died after a massive porn collection fell on him. The 50-year-old's body was buried under six tons of X-rated magazines. That's a fucking way to go, isn't it? Six <laughs> tons! What were, what, were his, what were his last words? Um, <laughs> oh, what would, what would they be? Too many articles! <laughs> Not like this! I'm coming! Hey! <laughs> <laughs> Authorities uh, only discovered the victim, known as Joji, six months after he had perished in his flat in Japan. Six Christ. months. Oh, I didn't a... realise it's in Japan. Yeah, yeah. What a oh, stain. that porn would have been weird. Oh, <laughs> they do love different pornography. Tentacle. Tentacle. I was going to say tentacles Tentacle. going up schoolgirls, isn't it? Basically. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Pixelated and... out, tentacles, tentacles, pixelated out. <laughs> yeah, that's always weirded me out, the way they pixelate everything out, but you can yeah. buy used underpants from fucking vending machines. Oh, yeah. oh, no. <laughs> what? What is that all about, though, all the pixelation? That's... <clears throat> if you squint, you can see it. <laughs> <laughs> That's just rude to the Japanese, dude. Oh, no, no, I didn't mean like that. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, Oh, shit. Oh, God. That's good job we're not live. 
Yes, as, as well as swears, we just put out the casual racism warning as well. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, that reminds me. Um, you, you know when you was a, a, a budding teenager and you'd swap VHSs with... No. With, oh, come on, give over. Did you used to buy individual, buy individual cigarettes off the ice cream man as well? <laughs> anyway, well, <laughs> the, the, a, a couple of movies went round the school. And it was my turn to to borrow it, shall we say, or yeah, borrow it. Was from it the... Animal Farm? No, 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 no. It was just a, a, a straightforward bumpy bumpy film. And the weird thing about it is, you had all the umpy bumpy in it, but whenever someone swore in it, they bleeped it out. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was most disconcerting because you you. You'd have this man having sex with his woman, and she'd be saying, "Me, me, me," <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> you, you couldn't. It, it, that was weird. That was put me off my stroke, shall we say? <laughs> <laughs> oh, any uh, other I weird, weird sexual I was say habits? About was going around the school, but you know. What went around the school? Your video. They edited it out because it was going around the school full oh, of kids. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. You know, they don't want it swearing. <laughs> At least they didn't dub it. Yeah, they could have. Yeah. It'd be Kaye, Mother Hubbard, and. Get the fuck out of here! <laughs> <laughs> Get the fuck toast! Oh, what was the other one that they normally dubbed as well? It was all. It was. It was that, and was it? Um, well. It was Mother Hubbard. Melon Farmer. Melon Farmer, <laughs> yeah, that's it. I didn't understand that when I was a kid, and I, I do now. But it's always weird when you watch it as a kid, and then watch it as an adult, and you're like, well, that's not how it goes. Yeah. Yeah, you you kind of remember, and you want the, the dubbed version. Yeah, very bizarre. <laughs> You're watching Simpler something. Time. You're watching something like five o'clock in the afternoon. Going, should this really be on at five o'clock in the afternoon? <laughs> Did you see that they, um, uh, someone on ITV put the alien chest burst oh, yeah. on one of I the just, news reports? I saw that somebody popped that up. Yeah, I, I it was can't... on at like five in the afternoon, wasn't it, or something? Just after Peppa Pig or something stupid. I yeah, I can't remember when it was, but it was. At an inappropriate time. They're, they're just doing a um obituary to John Hurt. <laughs> and, and in the in the news report, it just flashed up with the chest buster scene. Clearly this was meant for after nine o'clock news. And it went out was early. Kids news one. What's it called? News round. Oh, no, news, news round. round yeah. <laughs> you can just imagine John Craven waving his hands at the screen saying, No, no, kids, don't look at this. <laughs> That's why his hair went white. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Right, should we get into gigs then? Now that we've hey. warmed up. Right. Okay, gigs. Um, I suppose that the easiest way to get into this is how do you... Uh, what was your first gig? Uh, oh, no. Go on, Ollie. Go on. What was your first gig? My first gig was at uh, Wembley Arena... It was a very awkward gig because I had to go with my ex-girlfriend and we went to see Cheryl Crow. Oh, okay. <laughs> How, what, what sort of year was that then? That was what, maybe 95? 96, 97. Oh, okay. And did you enjoy said Cheryl Crow? To be honest, I really don't remember a thing about it. Give over. No, really. I, I, we had quite good seats, actually. We were... Like we were sat on the sides, but because I think Wembley Arena is shit for music. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's not especially good, when <laughs> especially when you're sat around. It's all right if you're at the front and standing, but if you're in the seats, it's shit. I've been there. I think I've seen two two bands while sitting in there, and it's terrible. No, Cheryl Crow was pretty much op- like opposite the stage, sat at the side. Yep. So, I, and because I had a little bit of a crush on Cheryl Crow, so it was quite a good seats to see her, but I don't remember a thing about it. Right. It was about 20 years ago. Yeah. Fuck, it was 20 years ago. Oh, no. Oh, God. Oh, yeah. 
let, let's not go down that road already. <laughs> <laughs> Pete, what about yourself? What was your first? My first gig, probably the opposite end of the musical spectrum to Ollie. Um, yeah. <laughs> my, my first gig was the um, it was the Rust in Pieces tour, Mega Death, at yeah. um, Paul Art Centre. And I always remember they were supported by Alice in Chains and the Almighty. Nice. <laughs> it's a fucking good gig. That's my wow. first. Yeah, that was my first one. And that must have been eight, 1989. Right. Who did you go with then? Ollie, did you just go with, it? was it just an ex that you went with? It was my ex and a mutual friend of ours who I'm sure she got with at some point, which was also awkward as well. Ah. Oh. <laughs> It's not a good time for me then, to be honest. I'm I'm really annoyed that you brought it up. <laughs> <laughs> it, it must have been quite a shock, you know, to be podcasting about gigs and being asked where your first one was. Yeah, I, 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 he's going to ask me what my first one was. I got to find something that wasn't that, and I couldn't remember. That's a curveball. <laughs> <laughs> that was the easiest way to get into this, though. That's the thing. It was going to happen. I know, but it brought back I can't some wait. memories. I can't wait to see this worst gig. <laughs> you will be the same one, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, no, no, I got. It. Yeah, come. Refer to question one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, Pete, who was you with when you went to to this one down at Paul Paul Center? Was it uh, Paul Art Center? Paul Art Center, which I, I think is still there. Um, I think it. I can't remember who it was now. I think um, it's a group of friends, like minded idiots. It might have been. Four or five of us went. Mm-hmm. Yeah, all all sort of our uh, sort of age and and what have you. I think I think one of the guys' older brother drove us down there because none of us were old enough to drive. Yeah. So, what sort of size is Paul Art Centre? Because I, I know what Wembley Arena is like. It's not quite as big as Wembley Arena. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, it's probably. Uh, Probably eight hundred seater, if that. Right. Probably is. Um, have you been in Brixton Academy? Yes, I have. That's the sloped mm. one with the bars, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Take out the balcony, and that's probably. It's probably a little bit smaller than Brixton. Wow, that's that's tiny compared to Wembley Arena. Yeah, that's the best sort of atmosphere. This is We'll go into personal preferences later, but I always think that's the best sort of atmosphere to see gigs in. Yeah. No, I yeah, I totally agree. Um, my first one was at Wembley Arena. Ah, Cheryl Crow, nineteen ninety seven. And there's this weird bloke wanking at the side of the. <laughs> I'm crying. <laughs> oh, Cheryl. <laughs> Having a sad wank. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you just reminded me of a couple of things. Unrelated. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> that for another show. No. Um, yeah, mine was uh, 1995. I went to see Blur. Ooh. And they were pretty much at the height of their powers at that time. Um, maybe just coming into it. And <clears throat> I think at least six of us went. At least six of us. And this, I think I told the story about the KFC and the Vionetta on a train. This was that night that my friends ate a Vionetta on a train. <laughs> oh, bloody hell. Yes, we're, we're very classy. Very classy indeed. Um, but yeah, that was, that was bonkers because, as everyone knows, I, I get that sort of feeling of, maybe the day or two before I don't want to go. And I had that an hour before I, I, oh, God. I was due to go and my mates had to drag me onto the train. Um, but yeah, that was once I was there, that was amazing. That was so, so cool. It was just nothing I'd ever experienced before. And I, Damon Alban did this thing at the very front of the stage He'd normally douse the first couple of rows of water with his water bottle. And we all got caked in it. It was it was just, oh, my God, we got splashed by Damon Alban. Brilliant. That's a gig then, is it? Because it would have been the hair. Yeah. 
But that, yeah, that was good. Um, Wembley Arena, though, I, I, I don't mind that. Um, <clears> arena, where, where actually, were you in the crowd, like standing? Yes, yes, we got That's... right up to the very, very front. Yeah, see, standing at Wembley Arena is fine. I've, uh, who did they? It was Baby Metal. I saw Wembley standing, and that's fine. Was it? No, it wasn't Wembley. Baby I Metal. Who did I see at Wembley? I can't remember now. Hang on. Yes, Baby Metal at Wembley. Awesome. Standing was fine, but I've I, when I saw Shogo, that was terrible. And I saw uh, the first time I saw Green Day, we were right at the back in the top corner. Mm-hmm. Sat, couldn't see a thing, couldn't hear a thing. It was terrible. But no yeah, idea. no. If you stood in the crowd, it's fine. But it's not set up that well seating for gigs. It's really not. It's mm. really not. I say because I've I've seen seen two bands at Wembley. Now I've seen Ramstein, mm. um, but unfortunately we were sat right at the back for that. Mm. So yes, you couldn't see much. You could you could feel the heat from the flamethrowers, <laughs> but you couldn't you couldn't really see much. And I saw Tool supported by Mastodon and we were right down the front for that and that was awesome that was mm. really good now flamethrowers oh I've never been to a gig with flamethrowers the closest I got to it was the Blur gig where they dropped a massive hamburger from the stage <laughs> uh, which was I, I can't even remember what song they were doing it in um, they just dropped a big hamburger down and it's like oh, why is there a big I don't understand but I okay. can't sorry do you remember who did Park Life? Yeah, we had um uh, Phil Daniels. Come did on. he come on? Yes, he came oh, on for it. Brilliant. Yeah, oh, I that... think I would have been very disappointed if he didn't. But yeah, he came on for it. Nice. Which was awesome. 1995, he wasn't doing an awful lot else, was he? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, that was his thing at the time, wasn't it? Yeah. Getting ready for his EastEnders run. <laughs> <laughs> God, that was ten years after that, though, wasn't it? Was it? Oh Christ! <laughs> yeah, at least a podcast where we talk about things that happened twenty years ago, and then can't remember exactly when it happened it either. Oh, no, oh sorry, <laughs> five years ago. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> so, flamethrowers at gigs, then? Oh yes. If you, I think it's still on YouTube. But if you, um, if you uh, YouTube ever do a YouTube search for Ramstein foyer fry at brixton academy you'll get the full force of what they do and it is just fucking ludicrous it really is mental you have um about halfway through the song the two guitarists and the singer will go off stage and they'll come back on fitted with flamethrowers right and each each guitarist will have a flamethrower attached to their head which will be controlled by somebody off stage. And the singer has also got a flamethrower attached to his head. Um, but his, <laughs> okay. is, his is slightly further away from his face because obviously he's still got to sing down the mic. So you've got the three, two guitarists and the singer up front with these flamethrowers indoors at Brixton Academy. Which isn't and these massive. Things are, which isn't huge. And these things have got a range of about 15, 20 foot and they're firing the flames out over the crowd. It's fucking insane. And um, as I say, when I saw them at Wembley, you could feel the heat coming off the stage from it. It was just mental. And now you're not even allowed to smoke on stage. Oh no, this was, I think when I saw them, it was uh, three or four years ago. Really? Yeah. Well, um, Recently, uh, Boz went to see um, Avenge Sevenfold with um, the Is Boz fourteen. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> and ooh, somebody else, and he was saying that the 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 fire from from their gear. I think it was Disturbed that did the fire. Yeah, Disturbed that, as well. He was at the top, uh, sat in the seats at the top, and could still feel the heat from there. So they're still using fire everywhere. Mm. Yeah. I mean, Rammstein tend to use... I mean, when I saw them, um, it was on the um, Liberus for Alada um, tour, and they had a 20-foot cock that that fired foam out over the audience as well until the singer would be winding around on stage on this 20-foot cock firing foam at everybody. See, I like, I've like. i never seen them. I've, I've wanted to see them, but I remember seeing watching the footage from Download, not 
not the recent one, the one before that. Yeah. And you got the keyboard players on the uh, treadmill. On the treadmill, yeah. Did they butcher him on that one? They were just lobbing stuff at him. Yeah, they they do lob they, stuff at him. And... He's there trying to walk on the on the treadmill doing the keyboard thing. They're just lobbing bottles of water and shit at him. And I'm just like, seriously, dude, he's going to fall over in a minute. Are there a lot don't... of Class A drugs when they are being done Pretty... when they decide what they're going to do on stage? They Pretty... must do because on one part they put the keyboardist in a big pot and then drop. Um, I think it's lit magnesium into the pot as well from about 50 foot up in the air. Mm. Um, <laughs> Did they not learn then, from James Hetfield? Oh, James Hetfield just a fucking idiot. It stands in the wrong place um, <laughs> twice. Mark yeah. Jackson wouldn't do this. I know that. <laughs> no, just Dutch children. Yeah, no wouldn't... proof. Um, <laughs> <laughs> But no, have you ever seen it as well? They do. They didn't. No, they didn't do it when I saw them. But when they do, because um, Ramstein covered Depeche Mode stripped, and halfway through the song, it's usually the bass player gets into a rubber dinghy and goes out around the crowd. <laughs> nice. It's brilliant. It takes crowd surfing to a new level. He's just in a in a rubber dinghy, stood up, going around the entire arena. It's really cool. What they're they're walking him over their heads. Yeah, that's it's wicked. Just, look, so like all it's that that one is on YouTube, and I've seen it numerous times. It's just so funny. He just gets on. They just get this rubber dinghy out, and he sits in the rubber dinghy and just goes around the arena. It's so cool. <laughs> People are just chucking stuff at him and all the rest. Somebody chucked a shoe at him and he caught it. And it's just like, oh, I'm having that. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> I, I might as well tell this now. Um, uh, people that throw clothing <laughs> at gigs. Yeah, but you're in a dinghy. What? How many Tom Jones gigs have you been to? <laughs> Go on, sorry, Ollie. You, you broke up a little bit there. <laughs> oh, sorry, I was saying, uh, how many Tom Jones uh, gigs have you been to? Oh, Tom Jones. Oh, okay. No, um, none, actually. None. 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 I think I might have seen him live. I'm not sure. Really? I think I have. Was this by accident? It might have been Glastonbury. I'm going to say he's done Glastonbury, isn't he? I think it was at a Glastonbury. Or a V Festival. Yeah, I think they're the, the most two. likely candidates yeah. for seeing him. Yeah, so I wouldn't <laughs> naturally go to see him. <laughs> oh, i got my Tom Jones to get through. Looking forward to this one. It's all the stereophonics, but <laughs> they're Welsh, that counts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, uh, so they're, they're just throwing utter crap at this guy in a dinghy. That, and does he get back safely? Do they, oh, do... yeah, they get, they get, they get, gets back and finishes the song, yeah. finishes the gig. Yeah. But they do it at most shows. They used to do it. The, the keyboardist used to do it, but he they used to tip the dinghy over and abuse him. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> whereas the bass player is like seven foot tall, and they they tend not to mess with him. <laughs> right. Yeah, you have to be a, a certain a certain way to play bass. I feel yes. Nah. <laughs> he says it's only it's only four player. strings. <laughs> <laughs> no, you got the six though, haven't you? Or you got the five? Seven. <laughs> I've got eight. Oh, you got eight? I've got eight. Oh, nice. got eight string, yeah. That's just far too greedy. Yeah. It's awesome. I love it. It's the Steph Carpenter uh, ESP. Gorgeous bit of kit. Mm. Yeah. And it just sounds like it's brr, brr. Are, are you a, a slap of the bass type man or a pick of the bass type man? Do you know, since I've been playing again, I've gone fingering. Really? Yeah. And what about bass playing? Well, it's usually more of a kind of, I can't fucking do this and throw it. <laughs> no, I, I mean, when I used to, I used to play bass years ago and I just hated playing finger bass because it just blisters your fingers to fuck. Mm. So I use spectrums. And since I've been doing it again, I've just completely been playing fingers and I'm like, I don't understand. This is fine. It's all good. But yeah, no, I'm fingering at the moment. Uh, good, bass, good that man. is. 
good man. Uh, okay, one for the guitarists then. Do you, uh, as you're walking down the road, do you just drag your hands across brick walls just to toughen them up a little bit? No. I have done, I, yeah. Do I, I do that. I, I'm still in the habit of doing it. Why? What? I don't know. It, it just, cal- why, it just why? calluses your hands a little bit. Yeah. Play more. Yeah, yeah, should play more, yes. But I, I just got it. When I, was, um, when I first got my guitar, I just got into the habit of dragging my hands, uh, uh, just the tips of my fingers, across brick walls, just to toughen them up ever so slightly. Never done that. No? No. Oh. There you go. <laughs> Every day's a school day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Me walking around rubbing bricks now. What are you doing? Mm. Rubbing bricks, making my fingers harder. <laughs> okay, what what sort of crazy stuff have you seen at gigs then? From either the audience. Now, yeah, let's go from the audience first. Audience wise, uh, fights. Nothing. Sorry, fights. <laughs> I was going to say Circle Pits and Wall of Death. Uh, wall, of, wall of Death at Baby Metal was brilliant. <laughs> okay, what is, it, it what was is so... Wall of Death? Wall of Death, basically the crowd parts. So you've just got this empty space in front of the stage. <laughs> and then at a certain given signal, the two halves just run at each other. Okay. <laughs> That's yeah. basically it. <laughs> and what happens... Fights, broken bones, bloodied noses, cuddles. <laughs> oh my God, no, I've, I've never been to a gig like that. They I don't, don't do I... that at Celine Dion, do they? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you'd be surprised. <laughs> Not that I've been to Celine Dion. Crying out loud, no, kill me now. I've seen, I've seen Wigfield. Really? Yeah. How so it's been hell? Hmm. I said it's been fun. I'll. Uh... <laughs> Wigfield was one of the best gigs I've ever been to. I'm, I'm sorry, we seem to have dropped into a parallel universe. <laughs> what the hell? This is a... <laughs> I my when I was at uni. Yeah. We had um we had two student union bars. One College Road was a bit indie, a bit metal, a bit grunge, a bit alternative, and was really small. And then you had this big warehouse place at Leak Road. And that was the other one. And they'd book bands to play at Leak Road. You'd have, I think we had Shed 7 play and a, a few sort of others. But somebody had the bright idea of booking Wigfield. Now, for those of you who are too young to remember Wigfield, <laughs> Google her. She sung this song Saturday night. And as I say, some bright spark at um at our union bar decided to uh to book her and sold zero tickets <laughs> and um, funnily enough and then one of my mates who i played football with at the time he was one of the sort of bar managers and he was we were just saying about it and we said well, we're not sure what to do we don't know what we're gonna do don't know what we're gonna do i said well stick a drinks promotion on and i'll get a few of the lads over so come the gig they put a you know, 50p for a double vodka uh, promotion on, and I'd got all my heavy metal mates to come and watch. So you had this <laughs> poor old Wigfield. She shit herself <laughs> <laughs> because she had a circle pit in front of her, and she was just like, "What?" The? You could see it on her face, like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, "Oh my god." <laughs> Poor girl looked terrified. We had E17 players, but I didn't go to that one. Oh, my God. I know that E17, a couple of years ago, they played a gig to 11 people. Oh, good God. 11 people. 11 people. But I don't think they They had Brian Harvey or Tony Mortimer in the band at the time. (laughs) Is it even E17 then? Well. Because that's just the two blokes stood at the back, isn't it? That's yeah, it would be yeah. Them two and some <laughs> other dude that nobody's ever seen before. Oh, good lord, that's horrific. Yeah, that's that's not good. So, what is a circle pit then? Is that different to a wall of death type thing? So, circle pits when everybody runs around in a circle. <laughs> 
what like so in... ring a ring right okay like in a, a swimming pool kind of yeah it's sort mm-hmm. of they they tend to get like a big circle going I, I, certainly a download like machine head and devil driver and bands like that will get two going at once yeah which is always quite a good fun and if it's dry it's just like these big sort of dust. whirlwind of dust come up it's absolutely fantastic looks really impressive really yeah. i've never seen yes yeah. i think again to youtube i think if you google <laughs> if you youtube um devil driver circle pits it will yeah. bring this up it looks really cool right okay i'm definitely doing this after the show then i was in the worst wall of death ever i was at uh watching oh, who the fuck was it I really hated them at the time. Oh, I've forgotten who they were. Shit. Carry on. I'll tell you in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to carry on with that. <laughs> I just completely it's forgot. Who... Okay, Begin but... with an S. Um, Begin with a what? With an S, I think. Um, hold on. Status quo. Carry on. No. I can't Carry... think of anyone else. Okay, uh, Pete, what about your, your wall of death then? Have you got any experiences from that? I usually do quite well at wall of death. Really? That surprises me. <laughs> I'm usually the bloke picking everybody up. Are you right down there? <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 for some reason, I always tend to fare quite well. So if you were in a wall of death and I was in the wall of death and we were facing off against each other... You'd I'd die. Be- <laughs> my kneecap would go and no I'd, I'd pick you up I'm quite, good, I'm quite good like that it's like whenever you go to a gig especially metal gigs if you're in the in the um if you're in the mosh pit at the front people tend to fall over people get crushed and all the rest of it and i'm always like picking people up by the scruff of the neck and mm. and all that sort of stuff because i can't bear to it, it just there's nothing worse than being crushed at the front of a gig so it's always just no pick them up be nice Enjoy. I hate people going to see a gig and just not enjoying it because they've been crushed. Yeah, I've seen that. Um, we, uh, me and Amanda and a friend, we went to up to Manchester to watch Oasis at their peak in '96. It was one of their two main road gigs. That... You can only go and see by Blur or Oasis. Mm. I remember. I remember the rivalry. No, 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 no. I, I was, <laughs> I was right bang in the middle. I'm fine. I I can uh, flip between the two. I'm I'm made of sterner stuff than these other people that <laughs> you know choose a side. No, have both. Enjoy both. It's the well, north yeah. south divide. Yeah. Um. Anyway. Um. We we went up there and it was in uh, Main Road, Manchester, and it's a pretty famous gig on their road to success, and. We on these gigs, you have the main stage, and then you have all the 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 parking permit I like to call them, where you get the the posh wristbands where you can go into the little D in front of the stage, and then you have a little oh, ring yes. of um, uh, what would it be? It would just be uh, metal fencing, I suppose, like four foot high metal fencing, just to cordon off the parking permits between the the other people that can't afford the parking permits. <laughs> and uh, we were just on the edge of that. And we'd seen like three or four acts on there. And it was it was all indie stuff. And I'm a bit of an indie head anyway. So it was going to be like that. And you know, we was all bopping around and having a good time. And then the main acts started. And it all, all started kicking off. And what I was not expecting is what they do in England. If you go to an indie gig, you you pogo, you jump up and down. And if yeah. if you have 5,000 people behind you as you're pogoing and they're pushing you, <laughs> every pogo, you do about seven metres left or seven metres right. And as you jump, you move and you never land in the same spot twice. It's really <laughs> weird. And trying to keep hold of people and keep together is really hard. And this girl, all I remember is she had lots of frizzy ginger hair and she was in front of us. And as we pogoed, we jumped up and her her head went crack on the metal railings and down she went. 
And then everyone jumped and you moved and she disappeared. And then the next thing you could see after it all calmed down was her being pulled out by the security and dragged over the bars. I think she spent the rest of the gig in the little D. So she got a good thing out of it. But she was possibly out cold for maybe 30 seconds because of it. Oh, bloody hell. Yeah, it was you know, going all that way. Imagine she's come from London all the way up to Manchester and then you last 30 seconds and you haven't even seen the band come out on stage yet. It's just the build-up to it. Wouldn't it be even worse hell. if it was a support band? Oh, yeah. They, there was no real pogo in, in the support bands. No. It, people were enjoying it, but they were there for Oasis. Mm. That was the whole idea of it, and everyone was waiting for that. And once, once that music started, it all started kicking off. And I, I'd never, I've experienced it pro, uh, after that, but never before that. That was that was quite something to experience. That was cool. But yeah, um, yeah. Have you guys ever pogoed? I might have done. I think so. <laughs> Back when my when my. <laughs> My legs could take it, and they don't cane every time I start jumping around. <laughs> You're too old for it now. <laughs> oh, that was ridiculous. Just standing just does my head in. I'm like, oh, my legs are killing me. I've been here <laughs> for four fucking hours. I can't go to the loo because I'll lose me space. I can't get a drink because I'll lose me space. Oh, why did I come here? Have you gone from standing now to buying seating tickets because no. of your age? No, I, I, I don't like stand, uh, sitting because no, you still I can't sit at gigs. Front of you. The seats are fucking too small and you can't get comfy. Yeah. I'd rather just just stand cuz you you get better sound from where you're standing anyway. So yeah, I wouldn't if it was if there was a choice I wouldn't sit. But don't you always no. get like the big dude, you know, the Pete Hammond stand in front of you. <laughs> there's always no matter where like both me and my missus no matter where we are there's always some fucking large cunt in front of me and it's just like seriously this <laughs> fucking building and you have to stand in front of fucking me and like, and like yeah leaving, but we'll be picking you up when you fall over in the mosh pit <laughs> I'm at the back by the sound booth <laughs> I like to leave a little like a little bit of space in front of me so I got a bit of room mm-hmm. you know yeah the, Fucking some bastard will always come and stand in front of me. I'm like, seriously, dude, I left that space for a reason, not for you to come and stand there. I'm not going to do anything because I'm all mouth. This is my area. <laughs> do not invade <laughs> my area. I get my measuring tape out and say, look, this is my personal space. Fuck off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Someone mentioned it. Mosh pits. Is it? Any different to uh, one of these circles or the walls of death? There's an element of organisation about a circle pit. <laughs> <laughs> you, hold hands. Running... you can uh, do. Yeah, you can do. And do you Especially run? Especially the circle onto it. Is it is it <laughs> or running skip. or skipping? Skip. I think skipping. Because <laughs> then people don't come near you. <laughs> and you look what mental. The fu- what the fuck's he <laughs> on? <laughs> la, 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 la. La, la, la. so mosh pits mos- then have you guys been in mosh pits that's where i tend to go where I, when i go to a gig now in my younger days and um, what Still, happens it's, this, this is it's, I, I, i've never been in this territory no you, know, you kind of have if you're near the barriers uh, it's basically Right down the front of the stage, yeah, and where you're saying about pogo, and it's basically that it's just pogoing, but you're bouncing into everybody else, yeah, it's low altitude pogoing essentially, <laughs> <laughs> but it's like it's it's a shifting, swaying mass of people, um, that can get a little bit unruly. There's elbows and fists and knees and stuff going about, but generally speaking, it's not. It's not circle pit. It's not wall of death. It's just sort of the area directly in front of the stage. And usually yeah. there's kind of like a an invisible barrier of people to stand back from the mosh pit who are just watching the gig. Mm. And then you've got the people in the mosh pit who are just going hell for leather. Right. And is it intentionally hurting people or not? 
No. Oh, no, it's not, not intentional, no. no, no. It's all done in fun and games. Mm-hmm. And like, I mean, say if you get a wallop in the head, you sort of look, I mean, it'll be like, ah, sorry, no worries, carry on, wallop. <laughs> what you're saying about the, um, like, there, there will be that sort of gap between people who just want to stand and watch and the, and the moshers, and, but they will be there to make sure that they don't crash into everybody else. Like, they'll, they're a kind of barrier as it was. So somebody comes flying at you, so you sort of make sure they're they're not falling over, and you kind of like a a safety pillar as it was. <laughs> right. Okay. And these aren't employed people; these are just people there to watch the gig. Yeah, yeah. you're just there watching it while they're moshing in front of you, and you're just bouncing them. They're just bouncing off of you. Yeah, they'll bounce into you. You just chuck them back into the mosh pit. Right. Okay. Wow. They, they... Yeah, I never really thought of it that way. It's quite fun to watch as a spectator. <laughs> Especially and if you're not that to the band, you're just like, I'm going to watch these guys. They said they're nuts. Yeah. So, Ollie, you've retired from mosh pits then? Yeah, I retired many a year ago. Oh, okay. A- any reason why or, or not? I don't like people. <laughs> I don't like getting bumped into it. I don't like getting hit. I just want to watch the band. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Miserable old git. No, I get it. I get it. I, mm. Yeah. I I go to these things because I want to watch a certain person or a support band or the main band, and I want to have fun. I don't want to get covered in piss. I don't want to be punched. I don't want to be elbowed. I don't yeah, wanna... I'm, I, yeah. That's, I'm like, I, like, I really want to go and see these people, but I want to see them on my own. And I have a nice comfy chair in front of the stage. I because I don't like people and I don't like crowds, so it's it's pretty much the worst place I can be. But yeah. I go anyway. Yeah, there's always that dream of everyone else can't make it. Everyone, <laughs> sixty thousand other people have gone oh, sick. Just me then. Hello. <laughs> yeah, and it's just me rocking up, and I've got a deck chair, and I can just sit there and watch the band of my choice. <laughs> Can, can you just hold on a minute? I need the loo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's the dream, isn't it? That really is. Yeah. <laughs> you have to keep moving your chair around. I'm just trying to find the perfect spot. Keep playing. It's all right. I'm going to yeah. try over here. So you guys have been to festivals as well then, yeah? Mm. Yeah. Okay. Um, What do we think of the person that's been at the front for six hours decides to have a wee-wee in their plastic glass and then luzzes it back into the crowd behind them. I don't know what happens mm. at Oasis gigs. Happens at any gig, doesn't it? I don't, I've, to be, I've, to be fair, I've never, I've never witnessed, seen it. it probably really? doesn't happen. Yeah, well, I'm always at the back. I've right. pissed in a bottle and lobbed it at the stage. <laughs> Was that Wigfield? <laughs> no, who was it? She was oh, not it was impressed. Um... <laughs> oh, what's it the fucking like band? Said... <laughs> she stopped the dance routine quite quickly. Yeah. <laughs> it was a download. Who was it? It wasn't my chemical romance because I was in the tent watching corn. I can't think of who it was, but now I've pissed in the bottle and lobbed at this stage. A glass bottle? No, you can't get glass bottles in. How <laughs> 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 <coughs> I'm just, just asking, just asking. Just um, had a we- had a weird and heavy hand bottle and lobbed it forward. Wow! Wait, did it hit anything? I have no idea. <laughs> you just to, be, to be honest, to be honest, it was a mass bottle fight. Oh, okay. And, uh, it was just you know, just got lost in the melee. Maybe for the drum skin. Because <laughs> <laughs> I've I've been to some gigs where you're not too sure whether beer has hit you or piss has hit you. <laughs> and sometimes you it's on your face and you, um, that's some, that's something that. went in my mouth. I'm sure it that's did. That's we. That's we. Yeah, it's normally we, isn't it? <laughs> been hit by something, but I'm just trying to ignore it. Yeah. Because that's the thing. I always assume it is piss because it's so fucking expensive to buy a beer at a festival now. But why would you throw beer? Yeah. Yeah, you're talking at least five quid, aren't you? Oh, mm. five, six quid for a pint. You're just like, yeah, I'm not throwing this over fucking anything. Yeah. But I've 
I've seen uh, it's normally um, g- girlfriends on people's shoulders, hmm. and <laughs> it just I don't know why they do it. Target. Yeah, it's it's We're just trying to knock na- them off. It's a natural target, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> and then just trying to knock them over. That's what it is. You you can if if you're on a sunny day, you can see a rainbow in the the water that is <laughs> cascaded over this person, <laughs> and it it just just gets bonkers. Um, I know you said something about a shoe being thrown earlier on. I went to a gig in Finsby Park, and there was this water slash piss fight going on and it it was like a big multicolored rainbow in front of me <laughs> and the the girls suddenly decided no I'm getting down there and then other implements you'd see the the glasses go across or the the, the plastic containers go across then you'd see um uh what what went across like magazines go across and you'd see plastic bottles go across then a welly went whoop, 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 whoop. <laughs> and then it went back whoop, 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 whoop. <laughs> and then dungarees went across who who the fuck is wearing dungarees <laughs> i do not know but dungarees were thrown at a gig that i went to Bloody hell. but i loved loved the idea of someone decided fuck this i'm i'm so angry i'm going to throw my welly that i need <laughs> to keep my feet dry, and welly fucking dungarees getting out of them to throw them fucking out. <laughs> I, I don't know what goes through people's mind. Obviously, they're off their face in in some instances, but yeah, man, I, I just don't. <laughs> I don't get it. Um, have we got any stories from the front of the 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 stage where where we pushed up to the front? The last one I went to, we got water, which I was very surprised about. Little cups of water. I was like, is it vodka? And oh. like, oh, I was like, oh, that's, that's nice. just Thank you very much. What? They're, they're handing them out? Yeah, just handing out like, little little cups of water. Excellent. I've never been at the front before. It's the first time I was there. I was like, I was like can I have like a burger or something as well? Or is it just water? <laughs> Funny, aren't you? I like, well, I try. <laughs> <laughs> I caught Trent Reznor. Nice. Oh, well, yeah, I, was... I, got, I tried <laughs> to take. I, I was going to take him home, but no. I caught him. Push him in your yeah, pocket. Trent. <laughs> yeah. He's little. He's only wee. He's a tiny little man. Did you, did you say to him? Did you hurt yourself today? <laughs> I saw because he staged. I it was. Um, I can't remember what year it was now. Two thousand and four. Might have been two thousand and three. But the, the with teeth tour is at Brixton, and um, yeah, he staged dove towards the end and I caught him I said I whispered in his ear you're going on eBay <laughs> <laughs> but then he was dragged back on stage oh. <coughs> nice any any other things that have happened up up front I got a plectrum oh who from Volby 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 <laughs> Volbeat Volbeat. Volbeat. They're a band. Right, okay. My favourite band. <laughs> oh, are they? Okay. Yeah, that's why I was like, because they were, I mean, they were lobbing them out, and I was like, I've got to get one of these. I pretty much fought for it. Mm-hmm. Some young girl got a, an elbow in the back of the head. <gasps> I was like, I'm Never. so sorry about this. <laughs> I'm so sorry, but fuck you. <laughs> <Yeah>. Mine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was, I'm very proud of that. Right, okay. What? Well, okay, you, you mentioned um, uh, Baby Metal. Mm. What was that gig like? Strange. Yeah? The first time I saw them, uh, I didn't really know anything about them. And uh, we were at, where were we? Sonosphere, I think. And uh, I was watching them. I was like, I'm, I, was, I don't want to take pictures because it just seems wrong taking pictures of little girls on stage dressed in little outfits. Mm-hmm. And it's but that it, the second time I saw them on there doing their own show, it was they're really good. <laughs> it's weird. It's like the 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 music is just fantastic. Like the musicianship is amazing. But then you've got these little Japanese yappy girls over the top of it, and it shouldn't work, but it does. Yeah. Weird. 
and my missus loves them and she was like oh my god but we were the, the way the stage was set up uh wembley we didn't realize that they um had like little rises that came out from where we were stood so we we're all looking at the back of the stage going oh yeah there's and suddenly these three little japanese girls popped out in the middle of the stage like in the middle of the arena like, oh my god there they are they're so small and japanesey <laughs> But yeah, no, they're, 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 it's it's weird. It's it's a good weird. Are they one of them bands where the band continues but with different members? No, they've had the same lineup since the beginning. Right. Because apparently she's right. an actual she was an actual singer, the main the main girl. Mm-hmm. And they got the other two together, but they've got such strict rules about not dating and all these other weird things like curfews and what have you. Very strange. Right, and that's well, just... They're a... only 14. No, they're not. Well, no, the main ones... I'm going to have to Google. Yeah, I'm, I'm Googling as well. Now, after our conversation earlier, I don't think you should be Googling Japanese. Yeah, Japanese schoolgirls, yeah, don't really want to be Googling Hang that. on. What, what, what? Hang on. No, no, no. What <laughs> conversation? <laughs> With the pixelation and... Oh, okay, yeah. I see what you mean. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> Baby metal. Okay, why does it keep going straight to iTunes? I don't want it to go to iTunes. Uh, they got a tour on at the moment. But yeah, they're they're touring with um, Guns N' Roses in Japan. Oh and, bloody hell! And the Chili Peppers in two thousand seventeen. Oh, yeah, Chili Peppers in America. Yeah. Uh, this isn't helping. They've got some. Uh, weird stage antics as well haven't they chili peppers i don't know i don't really care about chili peppers i i don't either but i know about the socks and i know about the light bulbs that's from like early 90s though isn't it that's proper early stuff yeah the main singer's 18 of baby metal the other two are 16 you don't fucking look 18 though (laughs) (laughs) oh dear officer officer about she must have been about 16 when I first saw her then. Oh, my God. Moving on. Chili peppers. Do you feel dirty now? Oh, I feel so dirty. You're so wrong. So wrong. In so, so many wrong. ways. But so right. But that's why we love you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, is there hmm. any band that you um, would like to go see or haven't seen yet or haven't seen? I think the only one I haven't seen that I wanted to see was Nirvana. Yeah. And that's it. I've my my wish list of, of bands I wish to see, I've ticked every single one off now. I'm getting close to it, but Nirvana would have been like the top one. But yeah. um I was so awestruck when I saw Dave Grohl on the drums playing for uh, them crooked vultures. Oh yeah, okay. They came down, well, we were supposed to see them, well, they were the special guests at Reading in 2009, but we missed it, and I was really gutted, because I could hear them, and by the time I got to the, the tent, they'd finished, mm-hmm. and I saw they were touring him, like, fuck me, they're playing in Plymouth, we've got to go see them, and I was like, oh my god, I've seen Dave Grohl on the drums, I can die a happy man now. Nice. I don't get, I don't get the Dave Grohl thing, I'm sorry. Um, he's like, Boy crush, I, I don't understand it. It's weird. Dave Grohl is uh, he's uh, the thing is, he's comes across as such a nice guy as well. Mm. I think he's the reason I wanted to play drums. Him and uh, Trey Cole from Green Day, mm. he started playing drums, and to see him actually play drums was just like <laughs> yes, because and- I mean I like. I like Foo Fighters, and I've always thought, eh, yeah, but he's a, he's a drummer. And you know, I mean, he's done a lot better now since leaving Nirvana. But I was just like, fuck, I've seen Dave Grohl play the drums. Yeah. So these Crooked Vultures, that was a, a mix up of Dave Grohl. And, uh, it was uh, Josh Homme from um, Queens, Queens of the, of the Stone. Stone Age. That's it. I was trying to think of them. Matey Boy from um, I can never remember his name. John Paul Jones from Led Zeppelin. Oh, okay. Yeah, when I first listened to the album, I was like, eh, I don't really get it. I don't. Great, it's it's 
John Paul Jones, but seeing him play live, I was like, ah, yeah, no, I get it now. Yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah. Is that uh, one of the gigs? Because they, they played Wembley as well, didn't they? And uh, Robert Plant came on stage. Oh, did he? Oh, didn't they get Led Zeppelin back together? Yeah, they played. Yeah, they did, yeah. Yeah, it was a couple of years ago. It was like a one-off. They all got together and it was um, John Bonham's son that played the drums. Yeah. Because I think he plays for... He, I think he did a stint with Oasis and I think he plays in Ringo Starr's band. No, he. Uh, it was uh, Zach Starkey that did a stint with Oasis. Ah, okay. But, yeah, there you go. Um, mm. That's another one, Led Zeppelin. I would love to have seen them. Yeah, I've got the Madison Square Gardens on DVD and that uh, the songs remain the same DVD, I think it is. Mm. It's flipping awesome, man. Flipping awesome. It, yeah, it, I sometimes think I was born in the wrong decade. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I would have loved to have seen Nirvana. Mm. Um, I, I was too young to even contemplate going gigs around that sort of time. Um, I would love to, though. Uh, but probably bottle out the day or two before. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, 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 so I don't think I'm anywhere near of uh, completing my ultimate list of bands I've, I've gone to see. I've, I've got so many more to watch. I've, I haven't yep. seen Pink Floyd. Uh, I know they're a bit overrated, I feel. Um, yeah. But, oh, Amanda went to Pink Floyd the night after it, uh, the Earl's Court uh, crashed. There was, it was 90, oh, right. 94 or 95, I think it was. I think it was 94. 90, yeah, 94. And there was a big gig at Earl's Court and one of the stadiums collapsed or one of the seating areas fell down and she mm. went the night after in exactly that place. She was sat <laughs> there. But she all she, all she remembers from that is... Um, Smelling puff all over the place. <laughs> what Pink Floyd gig? Yeah, no. remarkable. No, remarkable. But that's that's one of the smells of a gig, though, isn't it? Surely. Yeah. 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 No matter where, where, no Especially matter first... what gig it is. Hmm. Yeah, it could be baby metal. <laughs> it could be Wigfield. <laughs> could be Led Zeppelin. All of them. They they've all got that that certain smell, and I I flipping love that. Why don't they do a car odor of that? <laughs> I imagine get pulled over. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can probably get like you know like the little tree air fresheners. I'm sure you can get one like that. Really? Oh, you have to. Yeah. Um, yeah, you, I'm sure you can get them. Christ, you can get like um, like weed lollipops and shit like that in like uh, what do they call them? Stupid places where you can buy like fake cigarettes and fake. Weed and stuff, like a, a, a seventh son type places where they sell all the joysticks. Yeah, 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 shit like that. Yeah, so you can get one in there, or just fucking look on the internet. Yeah, okay, I might to Google <laughs> again. Google. So Go through history. Just look at where can I buy sweet <laughs> products? Yeah. Delete history after this episode. I didn't think I'd be doing this. <laughs> 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 what about disappointments at gigs? Have you had any, uh, Pete? I think the it was not so much a disappointment. Actually, no, there's two I've got. One was just an outright shit gig. Um, girl I was with at the time, she was a big Beth Orton fan. Mm-hmm. And I quite like Beth Orton as well. She's not too bad. She was playing Cambridge Corn Exchange. And... I bought a ticket and we went to go and see Beth Orton and honestly I've never seen anything quite so bad in all my life absolute dreck didn't help the fact that after two songs she t- she actually admitted this over the fucking mic I'm not really feeling it tonight oh fucking fuck you then I'll <laughs> 20 quid back then you bitch I'm glad you got Crohn's fuck off <laughs> awful 
awful fucking gig. Terrible. Absolutely awful. And it was just boring. And people were people were actually walking out. I've never seen anything like it. It was just really shit. Yeah. But the, the I think the biggest actual disappointment was Glastonbury. I don't know if you've ever been. No. no. But um, it's hyped as this, you know, well, obviously it's Glastonbury. Everybody knows what Glastonbury is. Mm. And I went in 1998, which was, um, <clears throat> I think, well, for a start off, it was the wettest one they've had on record. Mm-hmm. Uh, two people died from drowning. From and drowning? They only found drowning. Um, one of them, they only found four days after they cleared everything up. The mud was f- that deep. I mean, we, we, I was down the front at one point, and the mud was mid-thigh level. It was just a sea of like watery, thick, basically thick water. But it was really, it was horrific conditions, absolutely terrible. But um, they, it was back in the days when they didn't announce the lineups. Okay. Um, so it's just like, oh, let's go to Glastonbury for the experience. And you get there and there'd be fuck all you actually wanted to see. Uh, the year before, I think it was, uh, I think the Prodigy, Smashing Pumpkins, Reef, Placebo. Loads of really good live bands. I'm looking at it now. 97 uh, was uh, Prodigy, Smashing Pumpkins, Supergrass, Beck, uh, yep. Radiohead, Ocean Colour Scene, Dodgy, Cast, Ash, Cooler Shaker, Sting, Van Morrison, Sheryl Crow. Ooh. Oh, Sheryl Crow. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then the year after, 99, um, Moby and Nine Inch Nails. But the year I went, Absolutely nothing I want to see. Uh, a single band, single band I was interested in. It was really disappointing. Right, the main stage, nineteen ninety eight, um, was Blur, I think. Yeah, Friday you had Primal Scream uh, headline in it. Before them, James Foo Fighters were on there, and Lightning saw scenes. the Foo's. Yeah, <laughs> saw the Foo's. Uh, Saturday headlining was Blur. Then you had Tricky before him or before them. Robbie Ooh. Williams. Yeah. You know. Manson, yeah. Stereophonics. Uh Sunday, Pulp were headlining. Then before them, Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds, Sonic Youth. Sonic Youth, man. Awesome. I think I think I saw Sonic Youth. But oh, there, was, Dylan. there was nothing I was interested in seeing. It was really disappointing. Yeah. I think actually no. Tell a lie. That is the year I got into the Deftones because I saw them. They were on the Saturday on the other. Yeah, they stage. were. Sat- yeah, they were really, really good. Yeah, and I've been been a massive fan of Deftones ever since. They're really fucking good. Brilliant. But they, like that, that was when they were they were sort of heavier then. But since then they've kind of I think they've been listening to a bit of Mogwai, right? And it's kind of. Very sort of chilled out. It's really good. A bit experimental. A little bit, yeah. Yeah. Long long songs, progressive long. songs that don't really yeah. need to be long. <laughs> okay. What about you, Ollie? Have you had any bad experiences? Um I had a bad and good experience. Uh, one one uh, Green Day gig, the second one I went to, it was the American Idiot tour. And we sat watching them, and they did like the whole of the album back to back. I was like, uh, "This is okay," mm. I think. And it was like because I've always loved Green Day, like the early days when they were actually like a punk band, and then they come up with all the keyboards and everything else. And there's like four or five like guys on stage. I'm like, but it's a three piece band. And they did the whole of American Idiot, and I was like, ah, "That's great, all right?" But then the three of them came out and did all their old stuff, yeah. and I was like, "Yay, I like this now!" So it was disappointment, and then jubilation in one gig. Yeah, because they have the the other guitarists just in the just behind the curtain, don't they? Yeah, he did. Mm. It's not as bad as Corn, but he'd be kind of st- stood off stage. Mm. It wasn't it the uh, the Corn guitarists had to stand around behind stage behind the curtain and play. Yeah. 
Mm. Why do they do that? Why not just introduce another guitarist for it? Because Nirvana had Pat Smear come in. Yeah, but he wasn't. He was still in the band. He wasn't well, yeah, shunned he, off to the band or anything. No, he had joined the band by then, hadn't he? Mm. Yeah, because Kurt couldn't play. Yeah. And well, he was, he's added a bit more depth to it as well. Yeah. Which was cool. But, yeah. Yeah, I think the worst one I went to was, um, oh, what was his name? It was a Helen gig. <laughs> Helen gig, okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, what was his fucking name? So that's two you've forgotten now. I don't know. Well, I remember the other one. Michael. The, the, worst, wall, the worst wall of death I was in was uh, uh, Blackstone Cherry, who, who was supported by Shinedown. And we were watching Shinedown. And he was like, right, everyone part, everyone make a gap in the middle. And we're like, oh, here we go. Oh, Christ, fuck, I've got to get out of here. Uh, what he did, he walked down the middle, preaching about something or other, walked all the way back to the stage, preaching about something, and then carried on with the show. Oh. It was like, right, so we all moved to our left for fuck all. Oh, if you see, there's a YouTube, again, YouTube, there's a YouTube video of some, I don't know who it is, might have been Lamb of God. And they start off a, a wall, uh, start off the wall of death, but somebody doesn't understand what's going on, and it's this girl, and she starts dancing in the middle, and then <laughs> then it kicks off, that. and she just disappears. Oh my word! <laughs> she just vanishes. You're like, where the fuck did she go? <laughs> <laughs> she just turned into dust. <laughs> yeah, it was just what? Wow. The, uh, one of the most bizarre things I've seen is um, I was at a Gomez concert in Brixton Academy and I quite like that venue because it is quite heavily sloped. And Brixton's have, brilliant. You have these bars that you can lean on and it stops a, a crush from happening, I, I think, that they're there for. And some guy, Gomez is not about moshing or anything. It's student music, student indie music. That's what it's all about. If you can, instead of a drum kit, they'd have uh, suitcases because it, it sounds different. And Gomez, Gomez. What was what was their album? Oh, Because they, they, they were at Glastonbury. Yeah, they did a song called Whipping Piccadilly. Well, no. um, I, I was there sixty stone wobble? Sixty four stone wobble was their album yes, one or something. Yeah. yeah, they were abysmal live. Yeah, I wouldn't. Well, when I saw them, it wasn't too bad because it was in a small, small venue, so it wasn't too bad. But some guy started waving his fists around and wanting <clears throat> a fight at a and, Gomez gig. At a Gomez gig, he was trying oh, wow. to trying to create a mosh pit on his own. Or what I would seem as a mosh pit. And he got right into the centre, uh, front and centre, and started just blindly trying to punch. And this student circle formed around him of people going, what's he doing? Why is he, why is he doing this? And the band stopped. <laughs> I went, they, they all pointed at him. Went, you, out. <laughs> was he not just getting his groove on? He... he, he, he you could say that, but if you're at a Gomez gig, you kind of know the people that are going to be turning up to that. It's it's rather chilled, almost reggae type music. It's got a reggae vibe to it, but it's, it's but shit, he could have been off his head and just punching the air, going, "I'm no, loving this." There, there was lots of floppy haircuts. There was lots of band T-shirts and floppy jeans well, and converse yeah. trainers and he was the only one in full leather <laughs> <laughs> was he lost <laughs> <laughs> he may well have been he maybe had tickets for the day before i don't know and he just mixed out later. the toilets <laughs> 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 but yeah that was that was bizarre um one of my worst experiences uh i went went with amanda to see prince at the o2 when he was doing his 30 odd day tour mm. and it, because we we're at the O2, he had a lovely stage set out in the middle and it's all seating. 
unless you you got real big money and you're right down the front and you you've paid you know, 300 odd quid for a ticket to go see him and so we 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 had really good seats where we were we we were um on a plinth uh maybe above the first section of seats but we were the the first in uh that line and so we had no one in front of us all we had was a a metal uh barrier to stop you from falling off and we sat there and we, we were enjoying it and Amanda wanted to get up and dance but there was people because the problem with the O2 is if you stand up then other people behind you have to stand up and it irritates people and so you you kind of just sat in your seat wobbling around enjoying yourself and it got to maybe about halfway through the the gig and he, he Prince wanted everyone to stand up and so I stood up but I'd forgotten that in my lap I'd put my put the program in my lap and on the program I'd put the car keys <laughs> <laughs> and so as I stood up I grabbed the program and then watched the car keys bounce <laughs> off the plinth and all the way down to the floor and which was probably about a, a story below <laughs> and for the next 15, 20 minutes, I was panicking. Oh my God, how are we going to get home? Oh my God, how am I going to get this car home? I don't know. Um, but Amanda ended up jump. She, I think she jumped a barrier in, in that sort of. I was going to say, she didn't push you. <laughs> no, no, what, to follow the keys? Yeah. No. She, um, I think she, she, when she gets her mission head on, she, she just, oh, yeah, that's it. I'm gone. And she ended up jumping a barrier and speaking to one of the people. And it was <laughs> about 10 minutes after that, we saw a security guard on a microphone just walking out, picking up some keys and walking back. <laughs> <laughs> and five minutes later, my hand walked down with some keys in her hand. And I was like, oh, bollocks. Thank you. <laughs> but yeah, Put them in your fucking pocket. <laughs> yes. I, I think that's what her words were. Definitely. <laughs> But yeah, my my heart stopped then. I I, I couldn't enjoy the next fifteen minutes. <laughs> oh dear. You say about uh, people being annoyed when you stand up at on your seats and that. What are your pet peeves at gigs? Oh, I know one straight away, but I'll let someone else say it. Go on, Can't Pete. think of any. Can't no? think of any. Okay, it's. It's people watching it through their uh, phones. Oh, oh, I've got a brilliant one for that. Brilliant one for that. On the ticket, when I went to see Tool at Wembley, they actually put on all the paraphernalia and all the all the tickets, and when you bought the tickets, no recording equipment of any kind, no iPhones, no iPads, nothing. Mm. And we were, we were stood, I'd actually come out of the mosh pit for a bit, because when you go and see Tool, they do like a laser show as well. And it, it's it's a really good gig, but <laughs> there was this guy videoing it on his iPhone, and security just came up behind him, took the iPhone, and walked out. Really? And it's this bloke, and it's this bloke just going, "Where's my fucking iPhone? Where's my fucking phone?" And he's chasing after the bloke, and the bloke was just like having none of it, and just walked out. Big security guy, security written on the jacket, but yeah, they were confiscating stuff, and he just literally reached over the bloke and just went, "Noink," having that. You've been told. Mm. <laughs> I See, that's, just like, Yay! that's what I was worried about when the because basically my show is I re- go to gigs and record like g- uh, gigs, uh, review gigs that I go to, and because I'm kind of like trying to get little snippets of bands in that one playing. But the last one I went to, I was at the front, and so I'm stood there with my phone out trying to record a little bit. And I'm like, I hope nobody sees me. I hope nobody picks me out because I've heard stories about people being picked out holding their phones and that. I'm like, oh god, quickly. That's right. That's thirty seconds done. Put it away. I don't think thirty seconds is bad. No, but you when you stood there, sort of holding your phone up, trying to get a decent sound, mm. and so sort of, suddenly they'll catch a nine. Like, all right, what are you doing with your phone? I'm, like, I'm recording you for a podcast, sir. Quote. <laughs> oh, what? yeah, because I'm using. <laughs> What's a podcast? Oh Christ! Really? You want to do this now? <laughs> But yeah, 
people that stand and you're like you, you, they're in front of you you're kind of just watching their phone as well you're like, why am i watching the phone they're in front of me yeah i <clears throat> last time i went to wembley arena i decided to get seating sti- uh, seat uh, seating seats go in the seating area because i'm getting old now <laughs> and uh, because I, I just didn't fancy going into the standing bit i just didn't didn't really fancy it at all uh and so halfway through the gig, all of a sudden, all these phones come out and start videoing. And then you, you can see everyone. It's just a sea of iPhones and lighting up. And you, oh, if you was at the back of that, you'd be so disappointed because you wouldn't be able to see anything. But some bands get people to do that. <clears throat> They'll say, oh, because, you know, you should like hold your lighters up. They're, everyone's like, like shine your phones. So yeah. everyone will shine their phones up. And it does look quite cool. Well, funny enough, when we saw Jamie Cullum, he Who? wanted. Uh, sorry. Who? Jamie Cullum. Who? Jamie Cullum. We could do this all night. We better bloody not. <laughs> when we saw Jamie Cullum, um, he told everyone, "Film it, do whatever you want, post it wherever you want, just spread it around." And some people want that. And some people want to sell the DVD six months later. Mm. So I... yeah, but you stand there filming. You you stand there filming the gig and that you record a song and you go home and watch it on your phone. It is the worst quality ever. <laughs> it's the worst sound ever. And you're like, oh well, that was a waste of fucking ten minutes. Exactly. Yeah. Because yeah, you always think oh, this, it sounds brilliant. It's awesome. And then you get home and it's like, <laughs> oh. You're never going to sit down and watch it, are you? Know. No. Well, no. Really? You're not? Not on that quality, anyway. Mm. Except like all this Facebook live, like, live stuff. It doesn't pick anything up. It's shit. No, I, I wouldn't even wouldn't even bother with that. I'd Maybe if I was at a gig and something weird happened, I saw uh, Pete Doggerty at the... Royal Albert Hall, which is weird in itself, and I saw Cannon Crows. Albert Hall. So. Oh, did you? It's yeah. got a weird sound to that place, isn't it? Yeah, it's not very good, I don't think. But anyway, um, what the Libertines used to do when they were uh, touring, uh, their their last song, they'd get as many people as they could on stage and just join them for the last song, mm. and he did that, and it went a bit weird or almost to the point where he nearly smashed the guitar over someone's head. So that, I think that would have been enjoyable to, to video, but I, I didn't have anything like that on me at, at the time. But, um, yeah, I, See, I they, did, they did that, at, um, at Volby in Nottingham. They were like, all right, we want everyone to come up on the stage. If you want to come on stage, jump the barriers. And we saw a couple of people go over the barrier but we never saw them on stage. We don't have to <laughs> where they went, because I was like, all right, I'm at the front. I'm, I want to. I really would love to go on stage with Bobby. And I'm like, hello. I, I, oh no, I mean, my jeans are too tight to jump over this fucking barrier. I'm <laughs> old. I don't care. <laughs> but nobody ended up on stage, and we, like a couple of people bounced over. And I, well, where the fuck did they go? And we were looking around, and like, I can't see them anywhere. This is really random. Security are playing whack a mole with all the people jumping over. Security had a clue what was going on. They're like, right, go on, off you go. I'm like, no wait. They've said, oh, yeah. And then that, that's the thing, though. You would get thrown over the the fence, and you'd end up ejected at the back of the stadium. I've always thought that's stupid. Why? Why would you want to like go over the barrier and have to walk all the way to the back again, mm. and then fight your way to the front again? Oh, it just seems like a waste of time to me. Mm. So what happens at the backs of gigs? Uh, you stand around watching the band. Mm. And smell in the uh, air. From and where? Yeah. From which perspective? Well, I went to see Charlatans at the uh, the uh, Wembley Arena. And I, uh, funny enough, when I met Tim Burgess, I had a conversation about this. And he remembered it and he signed the ticket that I had. Um the gig we went to, Prince Nassim introduced them. And about 10 minutes into the gig, 
the whole venue ran out of beer. Oh, fuck. Yeah. And I I was speaking to Tim Burgess about this. And he went, I think he was worried that I'd just bought the ticket on eBay. And to prove it, I said, no, that, that was the gig that you fuckers ran out of beer. He went, oh, yes, yes, I remember that. <laughs> yes. You, you you were not pleased, were you? And fucking no, I wasn't. <laughs> we, were, we were quite right up the front at one stage and we decided, yeah, do you know what? Fancy a beer now. Let's let's go back to uh, get a beer and we'll stand at the back and just enjoy it because you've got all this space. Everyone's mm. crammed up the front and you, you've got room to move and enjoy it and get into it and smell all the smells and see all the sights. And we got up there, got tried to get beer, no beer. Oh, okay, we'll have some water then, please. Brilliant, thanks. <laughs> but yeah, I I kind of like it in a small venue where you're at the back, you're, you're still close enough to see the act. I think if you was at a festival at the back, pointless. Yeah. I, see, being at the back at download is quite good because the main stage is kind of at the bottom of a hill. So if you're at the back, you're at the top of the hill and you can see right down and see everything. Yeah, V's like that as well. Had like a really good vantage point, but I mean, where I usually kind of stand around by the sound booth. Yeah, that's usually the best sort of. You've got quite a good vantage point, and it's usually the best sound quality. Yeah, because that's where they're they're hearing everything and getting the best sound. Exactly. Yeah. And, like, oh. I, and yeah, usually I will stand there and get a good sound. Mm. And then some big fucker will come and stand in front of me. Like seriously, dude. <laughs> Almost need to take a little set of steps with you. Oh, I tell my missus, can I get on your shoulders? <laughs> no. <laughs> I... And then all the piss starts flying again. <laughs> yeah. Oh, whoops. I've accidentally spilt my beer on the guy in front of me. Yeah. Pete, do you ever go to the back of the the the, the area and enjoy yeah, it's it quite good. Yeah, I mean, sometimes it's quite good. I mean, if it's a band I really want to watch then I'll do that. I mean, I don't spend the entire gig in the mosh pit usually, but um, no, it, it, a, a good one for that is Cambridge Corn Exchange. It's like got the worst, venue. it's got the worst acoustics though, hasn't it? It's mm. terrible sound quality. Yeah. But um, no, usually you'd have the bit at the back and usually down the sides as well in Cambridge. And that was usually quite good for just sort of sitting around and chilling out whilst, all the mayhem was going around, going off around you. I've seen, I saw Jamie Cullum at Cambridge Corn Exchange. And oh, yeah. I went to see uh, Brian Cox and Ints there at the end of oh, last year. Monkey Cage thing. Yeah. 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 So, because obviously living in, in and around the Cambridge area for the past 17 years now. I think I've seen Placebo there twice, Bush, uh, Feeder, Llama Farmers, Motorhead, Sepultura, Beth fucking Orton, a um, few others. It's, quite, it's not a bad venue, but sound quality is a bit weird. And then, of course, it's quite good for comedy venues as well, because um, I think it's Jack D, Jimmy Carr, and a few others in there as well. Right. Yeah, I don't think it's a bad venue at all. It's it's it is a nice venue, but it, sometimes the sound quality lacks is lacking. I always found right. Okay, um, what about uh, do you guys ever wear hearing protection when you go to these gigs? No. What do you, do you ever wear protection? Hmm. Well, it depends who I'm with. <laughs> Japanese school girls, piss. Here we go. <laughs> Well, I don't need wear, I don't need to wear protection on my tentacles. No. Okay, fair enough. Um well ear defenders or anything like that, earplugs, do you do you no. wear them? No. No, don't be daft. What well, I'm not being daft. I have if to. your ears aren't ringing in the next day, you haven't been to a good gig. Yeah. That's the problem though. They they won't <laughs> stop ringing for a week. Yeah. <laughs> and that's when I've put the earplugs in. I I have to now. I, I have no choice but to. 
because it hurts so much. It gets to, I, I've been to a couple <laughs> of gigs where it just fucking hurts to the point where I'm walking out. And I, I, I have had to go seek earplugs. I've, I've, actually saying that, I think the only time I've ever wished I did have earplugs or something was at Motorhead at Cambridge mm. because it was literally right. Yeah. Everything's after like after two songs. Yeah. The bass isn't quite loud enough. Can you turn the bass up a bit? Yeah. Good. Right. Now the vocals aren't loud enough. Can you turn the vocals up a bit? Yeah, <laughs> now the guitars are getting lost in the mix. Can you turn them up a bit? Now the bass is out of whack a bit. Can you turn that up a bit? And literally at the end of the gig, all you could hear was, <laughs> It's like fucking brown noise. Yeah. Have you, have oh, you watched the, the Lemmy documentary? Which one? Uh, the recent one, I think. Just no. Before there was somebody saying, I think it was New Order, and they were saying they went to this the venue, and and apparently that the the good the the honest thing to do after you've played a gig is reset all the uh, settings and all the sound desk. <laughs> yes. Apparently, and he turned up to this one place, and he said, "Oh, no one's done anything." He said, "What?" Who, who was in before? They're like, oh, Motorhead. He's like, oh, can I plug in and see what my sound is like with, in Motorhead? Oh, God. And he said, it, it just wrong. He said, it just was just <laughs> shit. <laughs> yeah, no, you're not going to get sound like Lemmy. No. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's a good gig that I couldn't hear for like the next week was it was after seeing Motorhead. Yeah, the, they were fucking loud. Fucking hell, man, no. I, yeah. Uh... <laughs> I think we've all played in gigs uh, or in bands or seen the bands where everyone's chasing each other with the volume Mm. yeah, to the point where you need to sit down and go, no, let's stop. Let's all drop it down a little bit so we can all hear each other. You you all start quite all right. And then, well, I I can't hear me. I'm going to turn up a little bit. And then, hang on, why are you turned up? I'm going to turn up a bit. Hey, hang on. I'm going to turn up a bit more. And and your drummers, they go, I can't fucking play any fucking louder. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He, he's destroying four or five skins in one yeah. session. Oh, now I'll crack me symbol. Oh, yeah. Um, I, I don't know where else to go with this now. I, I, I've run out of questions. I, I suppose, okay, famous no, gigs say... that we know. Famous gigs that, Fam- yeah, famous ones. Any ones that you would like to have attended, maybe in the 60s, 70s, wherever. Any, any time, any place. What would you like to go to? James Hetfield catching fire. <laughs> and then the riots afterwards with Guns N' Roses. <laughs> yeah. Right. I'm going to Google this because I, I know something about it. This is it's on the Black Album tour. Yeah. It's uh, with the Black Guns Album with Guns N' Roses and Faith No More. And um, basically it was during Fate to Black. And they have obviously pyrotechnics and all the rest of it. And James Hetfield stood over one of the fucking fireworks when it went off. Oh, okay. Nearly took it. Nearly took his arm off. So they he, obviously they he went. obviously they, that, that was it. That was the end of their gig. That no more, no more Metallica, no more Metallica. You know, lead singers on fire. So they put him out and um, took him off to hospital. At which point, Guns and Roses, who were going to go on after Metallica, said, "No, hey, we're not going to play either." And cue riots. Oh <laughs> God. Cars turned, <laughs> shops smashed in. It was ridiculous. I think the other good one, again, this is a Metallica one. Have you ever seen the, the Metallica in Moscow? No. It's, um, I think, again, I think that was on the Black Album tour. And they played a Russian airbase, and there was about a million people turned yes, up. seen the picture from it. It is um, unbelievable. It's just a sea of people as far as the eye could see. It's just incredible. Mm. I've heard some people describe when they're on stage, you can see the first four or five rows, and then from then on, it's just beans on toast. Yeah, you can't yeah. see, because of the lights, because of the lights shining, you can't see a fucking thing. No. No, they're all glaring in your eyes, aren't they? You might. I mean, uh, do you know what? I last I went, uh, saw um, Alter Bridge, and um, a friend of mine was wearing a, a t shirt from a band that we like from Holland called Sequoia. And uh, the bassist pointed my mate out that was wearing his t shirt, and he was, and he sort of made the sign going, 
like your t-shirt and we were like holy fuck he's recognized the band that nobody knows oh my god and tried to chuck about five plectrums that everybody else pinched so we were a bit upset about that but it was we were just oh my god we've been recognized because of his t-shirt that was so cool nice but i can't think of any gigs that i wanted to be at i think i don't know for me um Hyde Park, Rolling Stones. I think that was the Hell's Angel one as well. Oh, yeah, where they had those. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that went well. Yeah. But I, I used to have that on VHS and used to watch that quite frequently, and I loved it. I just totally loved it. Well, there's one... Uh, there was... I used to have this on, on VHS, recorded it off MTV, was uh, Green Day Live in Chicago. And I wore that video out. It was on their Dookie tour. Mm-hmm. That was awesome. I'd like to see that one. What about the uh, the Green Day? And they did. Oh, what was the festival that they did? Uh, Woodstock. They did Woodstock too. Oh, but they got a plastic in mud. Yeah, when it, oh, the, the, the mud was from nineteen ninety four. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was that was the one Nine Inch Nails did. They had well, they didn't headline because Aerosmith came on after them. But for all intents and purposes, Nine Inch Nails headlined it because they just destroyed the stage. <laughs> and they went on. They went on late as well because they were having a mud fight out the back. <laughs> I remember the mud getting thrown uh, at the Green Day thing. And the... I remember seeing Billy Joel's guitar just covered in mud, and he was just playing mud. Well, there, yeah. there was a big bit of turf thrown at him it hit his guitar splashed it and then he put it in his mouth yeah yeah that was a that was a bizarre festival actually because they banned alcohol you weren't allowed alcohol at woodstock 94 right just weed so drug dealers had a field day (laughs) it's just unbelievable so ridiculous and the amount of heroin uh, accounts went up through the roof i'd imagine was just with Trent Reznor. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Back in them days. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, my, I got a, a pet peeve. Oh, that yeah, go on. Really, really annoys me. And you stand there, it doesn't matter whether it's a support band, the main band, whatever. You stood there trying to watch it. Somebody in front of you with their friend, turns around with their back to the band and starts talking about their day. Right. Never happened in the mosh pit. No. <laughs> it winds the fuck out of me. I'm like, seriously, I don't give a... You're, you're pretty much stood in front of me, facing me, talking about shit. I don't know you, but you're talking during, to your friend. I'm trying to watch during, the fucking band. During the gig? During the gig, while the band's playing. Fuck. <laughs> <I'm just, laughs> Never seen that. That's that's weird. It's happened to me probably about the last four gigs. Is it just you? I think so. I think people just stand around. <laughs> deliberately piss me off. <laughs> okay, another pet peeve. And and it relates to something else as well. Um when you're squished all together and you've got no space to you, and that elbow, instead of that elbow was behind you from the other person that you don't know. But has now suddenly snuck in front of you. And now you're behind them. You're like, hang on a minute. And so you try to put your elbow in front of them. And you're just constantly jostling for this. It just annoys. And if you didn't do that, you'd end up five or six people back with mm. in a space of seconds. I was watching Slayer. And there was this guy next to me and like people just kept sort of barging through to get to the front and that. And he just turned around and looked at me and went, nobody else passes. I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and he was just as stiff as a board and people were trying to get through and they were like, excuse me. And he's like, go round. I'm like, I'm not with him. Sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah, he, he was a scary motherfucker. I'm like, okay. Right. No, I, yeah. I'd steer clear of them. I uh, At the Stone Roses uh, a couple of years ago, uh, me and my friend, we managed to get to the front of that. And just behind us, there was a, a girl in flip-flops. 
Bloody hell. <laughs> I, I don't know what she thought was a good idea about that. And once all the pogoing started, <laughs> um, I'm pretty sure she lost at least four toes in that because oh. that was just, her feet were bleeding at one point because of, because people were jumping up and down. Why would you mm. wear flip flops? One, you're in Hyde Park and it's going to get muddy anyway. No matter, even if it's a, a beautiful sunny day, which it was, it's still going to get a bit wet down there because of spilt beer and people are having a bit of a waz. And yeah, I, I don't, why, why would you do that? Even the toilets. Oh, <gasps> that's one thing we haven't spoken about. Oh, toilets. A, toilets. Oh dear. <laughs> Toilets oh at gigs. Toilets, to be honest, I'm no good with public toilets, full stop. <laughs> <laughs> so going to festivals and I'm like, oh, oh God, I'm pretty much vomiting before I even get, as soon as I think I need to pee. <laughs> oh God, it's going to be horrible, isn't it? Well, stadiums are all right, aren't they? Really? Stadiums are, uh, yeah. Mm, yeah. Not at the end, though, when everybody's going. Yeah. Got a queue, you've got to wait, you've got to try and get in there and it smells and somebody's thrown up in there and it's like, oh, this is just, oh my God, I'm going to throw up. <laughs> but the worst one I did was, uh, yeah, Sonosphere before Iron Maiden, went up to the loo and they got like urinals, like outside portal ur- urinals and stuff. And I'm stood there, right? I'm the Lego hop- blocks. The little, yeah, little block things. Yeah, the um, Lego blocks, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm stood there, and I've gone in there, I'm like, right, I'm. Just hold my breath. Don't breathe. Don't sniff. Don't. Know. And the guy next to me going, "Oh God, my feet are getting really wet." And I'm like, "Oh God!" <laughs> oh, my God oh my trainers are soaking. I'm like, "Oh, I'm, I've got to go." I'm go- no. <laughs> uh, no, sorry. <laughs> At the V Festival, they have them urinals. I think they're the similar <clears throat> sort of things, and they, they they just stack them up line by line. So mm, yeah, you, you can just. As soon as one's free, you you jump in there. There were more people around the back of the urinals, pissing <laughs> up against the back of the urinals, than yeah. waiting for the urinals. <laughs> any flat surface, any wall, any tree was used as a toilet, and it was fucking stunk. It was yeah. just, the the mud, the mud. It's mud, not mud, dude. It's well, piss mud. Well, yeah. Earth mixed with water creates mud. It's piss Earth mud. Mixed with piss is a totally different game. It's <laughs> slippery. It's worse than just mud. <laughs> and it's got a certain stench to it as well. It's almost like a farm. <coughs> it's all slurry. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, though, the, the download ones, the portaloos are there were nice because you had Kazi Kings. They were like, they were called Kazi Kings, and they basically, after everybody had used them, they were there in like a little squirty squirt and cleaning them up, always changing loo roll. Those were quite nice. I, and I was actually, because usually if I go away for a couple of days, I will not shit for like a week if I'm going away because I t- do not like. Uh. And I'm, <laughs> I'm, I was like, I've got to go. I went in and I was like, this is quite nice. Ooh. But yeah. And then I went to Sonosphere and it was horrible. But yeah, no, Kazi Kings in Download, they were they were really quite nice, those toilets, I must admit. For, for a festival toilet, yeah, they're not too bad. It's just the queuing. I was like, oh God, I really need to go. <laughs> is there anything else that we've missed uh, from the adventures of going to gigs that you'd like, yeah. to, like to bring up? Have we said best gigs? you've ever been to no no i haven't actually no go on go on take it away then <laughs> i think the best gig i've ever had or ever been to was download uh i think it was 2007 might have been more recent than that but basically my mate's brother works for celestian speakers and they sort of supply black star amps and marshall and things like that. So he gets a lot of backstage passes to places. Mm. And he got me, him, and my mate access all area passes to download. Nice. And we thought, well, oh, 
exactly what does access all areas mean? Um, well, we were we were camping in the we were behind the stage, so we weren't out sort of in with everybody else like normal. We were actually behind the stage where it was all clean and it was all nice. Um, and our lanyards got us absolutely everywhere. Um, we watched ZZ Top and Def Leppard from the side of the stage. Sweet. Um, <laughs> ZZ Top, that's what I want to see. We actually followed them up. They nice. were going up on stage and we followed them. Um, you can't go on stage, we... you haven't got a beard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, we were we were backstage in the artist's um, backstage area. So you've got the green room where the, like, the BBC is set up and all that sort of stuff. We were behind there. Nice. Um, we were having we were having barbecue with Static X. <laughs> um, we were watching. I was, I was stood no more than ten foot away from the cloud i don't know what number he is but one of the the, the the clown face went out of slipknot he was having a tattoo done so when we saw them playing later on that night he still had the cellophane on his arm um just really <coughs> up close and um in in with it with all sort of the, the performing artists um to the point where my mate goes oh um i've just uh, i've just got a nip off for 20 minutes we've got a, i've got to have a meeting with slipknot Hmm. Right, okay. And he comes back and he goes, you're, quite, you're a fan of Slipknot, aren't you, Pete? And I go, yeah, I quite like him. He said, do you want to meet him? Oh, yes, please. <laughs> um, so I was hanging out with um, with Mick Thompson, uh, number seven. That dude is fucking huge. He's about six foot seven. He's massive. But no, that, that was probably the best sort of gig I've ever been to was that whole weekend Sweet. was really, really good. And that's, the, that's the one I, I, I think I mentioned on a podcast. I think it was on the question, uh, the question podcast a couple of years ago. I think it was toiletry habits. That's the one where I had a shit backstage, opened the trap door to, to found Marilyn Manson coming into the block. <laughs> and I said I'd leave that ten minutes if I were you, mate, <laughs> <laughs> to Marilyn Manson, and he ignored me, as 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 it is wont, I suppose. And as he went into the trap after me, I heard him wretch. <laughs> <laughs> Claim to fame. <laughs> Claim to fame. I choked Marilyn Manson with my thirds. <laughs> oh, brilliant. But no, that, that was a fantastic weekend. That was really good. <laughs> yeah, barbecue with Static X. That's when, obviously, before Wayne Static died. Mm. But he was there with his missus. And, uh, yeah, she was someone to look at. Mm. She's uh, she's also dead now as well. She committed yeah, suicide. Yeah. But <laughs> unless you've got Google safe search on, don't Google her. I'm just Googling a... Wayne Static. Wayne Static. Oh yeah, yeah. I I recognise him, and yes, his wife has died as well. Yeah, I know. Well, that... she was a she was a porn star. Yeah. But um, yeah, he was really nice. Actually, he's a really nice bloke. And the bass player eats barbecue like he plays bass. <laughs> it's a shovel, 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 shovel. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I, I've. I I can't remember if I was watching MTV or VH1 or behind the scenes or but I I do know that I watched a documentary or something about these two. And yeah, what it was, was going on. Yeah. Wow. Well, uh, what about you, Ollie? What, what was your best one? Uh, probably 2014. <laughs> All of it. Pretty much, because that was the year that I went to download and Sonosphere and pretty much saw every band I'd ever wanted to see. Nice. Or about to. But, I mean, the main hang- had, uh, the main highlight was Metallica. And I just was smiling from ear to ear. I was like, oh my God, I've waited so long to see Metallica and i finally seen Metallica. And I absolutely loved it. Mm. Which Metallica did you get? Did you get, we're not going to play anything past 1991 Metallica? Or did you get the, oh, we're going to play our new stuff, stop chucking stuff at us? No, this was... Um...
I think it was a fan voted thing. So everything oh, they right, played yeah. was voted for. And they, they played one new tune. Um, oh, what was it called? Summer, uh, summer something or other. I can't remember what it's called. Before the new album came out. I don't think it was actually on the album. Yeah, no, no, that was weird. But no, yeah, it was a, it was a complete van, fan vote thing. Everyone that got a, bought a ticket for Sonosphere got to vote for a tune. Oh, that's cool. And then the last the last song that they played at the, on the night was a vote during the day, and the votes were still going on while they were playing. They'd sort of stop and go, and oh, let's have a look who's in the lead. And it's like, oh, well. But then they never actually played. They played the song, but then played another song after that anyway. So it wasn't really the last song, but I, well, I don't care. I was like, oh, my Metallica. Nice. I had just the biggest grin on my face. <laughs> they are good. They are good live. When they're doing the old stuff, they are really good live. Yeah, it was all all the old stuff. I think the the earliest thing they played. I don't think they even played anything of Death Magnetic. No, so whenever I've seen, I think I've seen them four four times now, and they've never gone. It's all been from 1983 up to 1991, and nothing beyond the Black Album been perfect. Uh, they, well, they did like sort of fuel and because I, no, I didn't, I, didn't even do that. It's fantastic. No. The most recent thing they did was Sad but True. Wow. The only really annoying good. thing they did, they had like a couple of things. They had people come out on the stage to introduce the songs. Oh, that's annoying. Well, they had like um, I think it might have been people that have paid like an exorbitant ma- amount of money have a little crowd on stage and there's this one guy that came out to to um and of course everyone's from london you know oh where are you from london and, oh okay london and, oh yeah because there's nobody else but london and this one guy come out and he's wearing shades he looked like a pleat tall and like james was like why are you wearing shades he's like oh you know it's a, it's a bit sunny he took him off he had this massive shiner on his eye <laughs> we were like oh wanker but, <laughs> yeah that was the only annoying bit but i was just Oh, that, was a, that was the only reason we went. I was just so happy to see them. Download 2006. Saw Metallica. They played um, Master of Puppets in its entirety. That was a fucking gig and a half. That was. Just, yeah, they did the Black Album back to front. Was that say again? They did um, the Black Album back to front. What played the, the last song first they the last song first and finished with Enter Sandman was that 2011 they did that it was, either, it was either that or 13 12 or 13 oh I'm going to have to look this up now because when they did Master of Puppets that's the 20th anniversary <laughs> man looks something up on computer yep what about you Elton what's your best gig you've ever been to Okay, um, I think it's more of a, I, I've got some really good gigs I've been to, but I, as a, a total experience, uh, Amanda was working for the Greenwich University when we were living in London, and uh, she got tickets to work at V Festival, I think 97 or 98, Oh, 97 was a good year. I went to that one. I think it might have been the same one. I think we've spoken about this before as well. Prodigy headlined. Uh, Foo Fighters headlined, I think. We had the Foo Fighters. We had yeah, we had the Foos, Reef, Placebo, Cooler Shaker. Prodigy headlined. Right. I, I can't remember I can't who we saw. Anyway, I uh, went there. I was there helping out. I said, well, Amanda was working and she said, can I come along, help out for half a day and then disappear? And they went, yeah, okay, fine. So I got in for free. I handed out bags. I handed out beach balls and frisbees and stuff like that for half a day. And then the rest of it was uh, our own. You say 97? I think it was 97. Saturday was Prodigy with Beck, Foo Fighters, and Placebo. Yeah, that sounds right. On a Friday was Blur, Cooler Shaker, Dodgy, and Reef. Yeah. Dodgy, there we go, fucking hell. Maybe it's 98 <laughs> then. Oh, Ash were playing. 
I I know because I I specifically asked that I could go off and watch the Web Brothers because I was getting into the Web Brothers at the time and I was just blown away by them. I thought they were amazing. It, even though I, I don't even know if they're they're playing anymore or recording anymore or just lost touch with that sort of thing. But I just, they were unknown to anyone else. And I was like, no, I want to go see the Web Brothers because nobody else knows about them. Uh, Charlatans were playing as well on, on uh, the day before we went. Uh, oh, 98, it was the Charlatans, Texas, Robbie Williams. Oh, God. Space, yeah. Stereophonics Feeder. It was it was that weekend. But... Friday it was Verve, Seahorses, Green Day, Lightning Seeds. Chumba Wumba! Chumba Wumba. Oh, God. <laughs> but the Foo Fighters were there as well, because I remember walking out as, as the Foo Fighters the... were playing. That was 97. I remember walking out as the Foo Fighters were playing. Because we decided not to go see them. I don't know. Maybe I've mm-hmm. twice. I don't know. But it, it, the the good thing about it is I got there. Well, we got there and we were we we could see the stage and there was no one there. But I could, <laughs> where I was stood, I was t- I was told to position myself and I was given about 100 bags, 100 of these Hessian bags to hand out. And they opened the gates or well, the gates were, were closed and you, all you could see like the other uh, Said, I, I said earlier on, it was just baked beans on toast from the gate onwards. <laughs> it was just that. And then the whistles went round and you thought, hang on, what the hell is going on? And they opened the gates and oh, <laughs> thousands of people just spewed into this field and headed as quickly as they could towards the main stage down this hill. And it's a little bit of a slope down there as well. So yeah, watching these people and what... I had so much fun watching people trip over and <laughs> just <laughs> not getting down there. And I was handing out these, but do you want a bag? Do you want a bag? And nobody, nobody cares. They're just grabbing it. They don't give a shit. They don't want a bag, but they, someone's handing you something. So they're grabbing it and taking it and grabbing that. And we're throwing Frisbees and blowing up beach balls. And it was, it was good. I, I like the idea of festivals. It was, um, it was eye opening. It it smelt wonderful as I as you'd imagine, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. I really had such a good time there. So yeah, that was that was my best experience, I suppose. Hmm. But it, it was a good weekend. Okay. Uh, anything else that you'd like to touch on before we wrap it up here? Uh, don't think so. No, we well, probably pretty much covered it. I think. Yeah, I think that'd do for now. Then, but uh, on the other side of things, have you done gigs from the stage? Yes. Oh, what played gigs? Mm. Yes, yes. But on the opposite side. Yes. How'd you get on with that? I loved it. It's something else, isn't it? It is. There's been many a gig I've done, and it's just gone over so quick. I'm like. Can we do that again? That was so much fun. Really want to just go again. I've done really good ones and stinkers as well. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like the ones where we used to walk off stage and go, well, that was shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I actually said that during a gig as well. <laughs> because we lost our place in the song and <coughs> our lead guitarist didn't turn up. And it, it... Always good. Well, yeah, he, he was some American guy who's really good warming up, but when he got down to actually working out what he wanted to do on a lead guitar solo, it was exactly the same. It was diddly do, diddly do, and it's just the same thing again and again. And it, it, it didn't work, and we had the gig, and he didn't show. Never saw him ever again. <laughs> Probably got cool. But um, one gig I played... Uh, I, I don't know if anyone's going to listen to this who is actually playing with me at the time, but if they are, hi. Um, <laughs> it'll probably be Mike if if it's anyone. Um, he he was our bassist in the band, and we were playing at a place in Clapham, I think it was, and there was hardly anyone in the the pub, but we we went on 
uh, we were uh, supporting my mate's band as well. And they set their stuff up on the on the stage and left no room and wouldn't <laughs> remove their stuff for us to put our stuff on the stage. We was, so we were sat around their drum kit <laughs> with another drum kit <laughs> off to the side because there was no room for anything. And halfway through the gig, Mike, uh, the bass player, his string snapped. It was the E string Ooh. on the bass. Jesus. The fattest, thickest bass string. Mm. And it went pop. And he had his, he always played with it quite low slung. And so halfway through the gig, we went, um, could we borrow your bass? And so <laughs> they were humble enough to let us borrow their bass, but their bassist played it up very high indeed. <laughs> and it was, it was, just, if it went wrong, it could go wrong. And I remember because uh, our lead guitarist was borrowing one of my guitars and at the end of it, he just picked it up and threw it into our drum kit. And I was like, oh, what are you fucking doing? That's my guitar. <laughs> so I had a massive <laughs> row with him. Uh, <laughs> After that as well, because he threw my guitar into our drum kit. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that was um, that was shit. <laughs> the the best and worst gig that I ever did was we were playing in front of three people, and we were just like Uni seventeen. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Brian Hart turned up though. <laughs> No, he, like, oh, he was too busy running himself yeah, over. I was going to say running his own head over. <laughs> <laughs> we, were like, we were like, oh, fuck it. We'll just treat it as a as a band practice. You know, sod it. But the the three that were in the crowd, one of them I, I knew and I was friends with and used to be in a band with, but he brought his two friends along. And every time I see him, they said, that is the best gig they've ever seen. They said, we just went up there, we played, and that's all they talk about when they meet up. So it's like, from our uh, from our point of view, it was the worst gig we've ever done. Mm. From their point of view, it's the best we've ever played. <laughs> it's like, yeah, well, you know, swings and roundabouts. Well, that, that's the difference, though, isn't it? When you're in a rehearsal room, you get the sound going around you. But when you're on stage, it's going away from you. Mm. And it's all very, it's very weird to get used to that. Well, I'd always go, because I'd always go out into the, the crowd as it was. To listen, when we were setting up to, to hear what the sound is like yeah because i i did sound engineering at college and, and what have you so i kind of try to get a, a feel for the sound i'm like no you need to turn up and you need to turn the fuck down so i'd always sort of wander out into the crowd to listen to the sound and if the crowd wasn't doing anything i would get really bored and walk out there and just play in front of them <laughs> i just stand there the floor and play. i did it once and realized that i was in the wrong key i hadn't tuned down so i started like Rah! and i was like fuck i mean i'm not tuned up so i had to gently sort of step back onto the stage like walking backwards like la, da, da. tune my guitar fuck, 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 fuck. there we go and carry on <laughs> what, what about you pete have you got anything like that <coughs> i always remember we did um i was in a sort of grunge covers band sort of nirvana l7 bit of sonic youth that sort of stuff and we <laughs> booked to play this gig and we turned up and we sort of looked out and thought, that's not sort of the usual crowd we sort of tracked. There was no, you know, nobody had long hair. There was no flannel shirts, nothing like that. And they'd got it completely wrong. The The venue thought that we were kind of like a take that sort of <laughs> tribute act. And we really, really weren't. And yeah, it all kicked off. <laughs> I got into a fight and all sorts, and yeah, it was it was very silly. <laughs> but no, it, it was they were basically we ruined like two hundred people's night because because <laughs> they they were expecting let's take that sort of you know, that sort of genre of music as it were, and there we turn up playing fucking Nirvana covers, and they, they got quite understandably quite angry about it. <laughs> so yeah, that was fun. <laughs> My um, lead guitarist, he, he's before I joined the band, he said he was playing a gig, and they didn't know at the time there was a wake. <laughs> oh no! In the room, and they ended up playing "Live Forever." <laughs> oh no! <laughs> <laughs> the, 
they they said that went down really well. Oh dear. We did a many many moons ago with one of the bands. Was, we supported a um a Pink Floyd tribute band, and we 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 played our set and they and was like hey cheered and that they went off band came on played their first song and like sort of did the whole and thanks for such and such for a place that was the loudest cheer they'd heard all night wow and we were like okay we'll be leaving then <laughs> scarpa scarpa <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh dear right okay i'm gonna call it yes the end there if you don't mind all right okay, lights have gone down curtains down yes lights up Curtains down, smoke, and then you realise who you're standing next to. You're like, oh, oh, oh dear. Um, Thank you very much uh, for joining me, guys. That was excellent. I think we could talk about this for for hours and hours. There's so many little um, different avenues that I I think we could uh, disappear off into. So I, I think it's a cool subject to talk about. Maybe might return back to this again at some point. I don't know. We're, we'll see anyway. We can always return to any subject that we do. Um, have you guys got anything you'd like to plug before I kick you out? Uh, let's start with let's start with Pete. I've never got anything to plug. Danny I'm going to say, I was going to say the artwork of Danny Davies. It's my go-to. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, fuck it. Danny Davies and the LSG Media Podcast Network. Ah, oh, Tom Ann, yes. I was going to mention them, yes. Good. I, I do always put Danny Davies in the uh, show notes as well. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that is there. So um, hopefully he, he he might recognize it once or twice. Um, Ollie, have you got anything? Uh, I can shamelessly plug myself uh, and then my podcast as well. It's the Punk Rock Skunk podcast. It's where I grab the nearest person and we go to a gig and review it. That's about it, really. Cool. It's on Podbean and... No, not Podbean. That's the old one. Uh, Podomatic and iTunes. Nice. And Have you got any new episodes coming out for that soon? Um. See, this is the problem. I live in the South where nobody comes to and I can't afford to go to gigs every week. So it's like a podcast every six months. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, the last one was one that Boz did for me, but the next one, I think I might do one in the beginning of April. There's a little festival up in up near me that's going on, so I might do that. Right. Well, some you... big ones. Coming up. Spoilers. Oh. Nice. Would you um, let people review for you? Yes. I, I've tried. I've tried. I've tried. Yeah, if anyone's going to a gig and wants to do it, then I'm happy to put it out and edit it and and what have you. Just contact me. I'm lonely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, hit me up on the Facebook page and uh, yeah, we can go from there if anybody's interested. Cool. If you want to hear how it's not done, you can listen to the last one, which Boz did. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Good man. Okay. There we go, yeah. Done. Um, uh, what have I got to plug? Well, uh, LSG Media, because we were, we were joined by uh, Dean Martin last time out to talk about movies uh, of 2017. So uh, please pop over to Liberty Street, LibertyStreetGeek.net and they do all their, their stuff over there. So, you know, give them a shout. Let them know you heard about them from us as well. Uh, you can, while, yeah, while you're at it, check out Hypnobobs. Check out the Black Dog podcast. Check out the Grand Prix podcast. Check out the Band of Brothers podcast that myself. Oh yes, I was going to. I was going to say that. Yeah, myself, Andy, and Pete has been on one, and he will be joining us for a, a couple more as well. Yeah, uh, that's all over at Road Two Media. Uh, what else is there to plug? I'm Space Doc Jury to plug. <laughs> uh, the Borg cast. I, I'm running out of other things to plug. That just just check out all our friends if if you can and uh, five star rated reviews in iTunes are always wonderful and nice to receive. So there we go. I'm just going to say thank you very much to Pete for joining me. No worries. And thank you to Ollie for joining me as well. Thank you for having me on. You're welcome, and please, you, you're both more than welcome to come on at any time you want. You know that. Just a live one. Yes. Um, 
it just leaves me, and this is the most fitting this will ever be. Uh, it just <laughs> just leaves me to say to change it this time. No, no, I'm not not changing it. I'm not oh, changing it. I'm sorry, but you do not walk away from a gig being quiet. Please leave quietly. This is a residential area. <laughs> Yeah.